everybody. So it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Our new 3D printer has arrived today. It is a Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro. And you can see the box looks a little rough, especially on the side over here, since it's hard to see on the video. But this thing has been shipped probably three times, obviously from China to uh, Amazon in California. Then it left California to uh, go to a local distribution center, and then it got shipped to me. So yeah, the box has definitely had a little bit of a rough journey, but hopefully everything aside is intact and okay. That being said, let's go and unbox it. So we're going to unbox this, and we're going to go to the setup procedure here in this video. Of course, be careful with the knife. You don't cut too deep inside the box when you're going to here. Okay. Upon opening the box, you're greeted with, looks to be a manual, after sale service. Very well packaged. Lots of foam. All that good stuff. Now let's carefully get this out of here. Again, the outer box is definitely seeing its better days. Carefully try to lift that out of here. Okay. Had to get my arm under it. Okay, front's over here on the left. And that is what's left inside the box. It's just more foam padding. So everything is actually packed inside the 3D printer. So here you're looking at this lovely piece of furniture, courtesy of Nick's Hack Job Furniture Company. Put this together with just two by threes, some half inch pieces of uh, plywood, and got two by four on the bottom, and some thinner plywood on the back. So, I should mention at my place of work, we have. Flash Forge Adventure 3's and this is definitely a bit bigger than the Adventure 3's. I knew it was going to be bigger when I saw the print bed size was bigger. Let's carefully get this plastic bag out of here. We got lots and lots of tape here to deal with.
Okay, so if we open both of these doors here, you can see we got lots of foam in here. And inside the 3D printer is where we have all our stuff. So we got our extra nozzle and we have, let's see, this stuff right here which you would apply to the um, bed. It's 3D printing adhesive. Got a spare pot in. It's a different size, I think. Yeah, it's 0.6 millimeter. So there's a 0.4 millimeter pot in installed in it. And that's kind of the one that we typically use. Power cord. So we have a sample size of the PLA burnt titanium filament, which looks really nice. I think it's $20 a kilogram on Amazon roughly. And this is a quarter of a kilogram that they give you. We're gonna pull this out to get this foam out of here. So it looks like we have one minor boo-boo in the shipping or the assembly. Um, the front of the extruder assembly is just laying in the bottom of this thing. While I was reading the uh, reviews online, it just pops on with the fan is disconnected. I'm going to look into that. Okay, so I think what could have happened is maybe they might have forgot to plug this up before they ship this out or more than likely it just came loose during transit so this is actually held on by a magnet and of course the little fan here has a connection right up there so i'll have to go ahead and plug that in and we'll snap it back into place okay so i got the fan connected so now it's got to put this back into place and there you go so it's nice you have easy access inside there and as you can see right there is the 0.4 millimeter hot end. Now what, what I do like about the hot ends on the Aventure 5M Pro is they have a nice copper heat sink on them. Let's take that back off for a sec. You can see that copper heat sink right there. The Hot ends on the Adventure 3s at my place of work do not have this good of a design. So I'm glad to see they've improved on that. So I think the Adventure 3 and the Adventure 4 had the older style hot end. So the Adventure 3 hot end does not have that heat sink on it. Whereas, for example, the Dremel Digilab 3D45 has a massive heat sink on it, on its hot end. But one thing I like about the Flash Forges is the ease of being able to change out the hot end it's just you you press in these two buttons on the side and you can just literally pull it down and change it out so here's us look inside the thing so you have this big fan on the left side that um moves a lot of air to this thing and i believe that's what is needed for when you're doing high speed printing in this thing and of course the extruder is direct drive you can see the teflon tube up there the filament um, runs through which is not connected right now. I think that could have been another thing that might have got bumped loose during shipping We have two filters in this thing So they are HEPA filtration So you have a HEPA filter like what you see in a vacuum cleaner and on the side we have activated charcoal I mean it's a nice machine this thing reminds me this this 3d printer reminds me sort of it's like a small version of the stratus 3d printers that we have in my place of work they're high speed they have all the bells and whistles like the filtration all that good stuff this literally reminds me of them now it's kind of hard to do this one hand i'm going to, have to use both my hands to put that back home okay so this teflon tube it literally just slides in right there 
You know, we should have some more stuff to go through. I think we had a small tool kit as well. Yeah, so apparently on the other side of that foam was the rest of the tools. So, you get screws to mount the filament holder. This goes on the back of the machine. Have a uh, Allen wrench for the screws right here. And these uh, cutters right here. Pretty nice, actually. They give you some more, another Allen wrench. We have a small screwdriver. We have grease. Again, the 3D printing adhesive right here. And our 0.6 millimeter hot end right here. Also, we have another Allen wrench. And we have an unclog tool to unclog the nozzle on this unit. So you do get a good variety of things fresh out of the box with this product, for sure. So in addition to the uh, stuff that we saw previously, inside the bag with the user manual is this SanDisk 16 gigabyte flash drive, which should have flash print as well as, I think, Orca slicers. Let's see what else we have on there. All right, so we have a quick start guide in PDF form. We have Flash Print 5, as well as Orca Slicer, and Slicing Software Instructions. It's for Orca Slicer, apparently. So what I was reading online is, um, apparently, Flash Print is one you have to use if you want to use the uh, network printing functionality of this device, which I'm familiar with Flash Print anyway. So actually, I'm going to be downloading Flash Print off of the internet. That way I get the latest version. We have some test files in here. And of course, the user manual. Okay, so before we plug this in and start it, there are four screws that we must remove from the bed. They have these screws in here to keep the bed fastened down to the bottom of the machine during shipping. So we got one here, one there, and two in the rear. You can see the yellow arrows denoting the screws that must be removed. And only the silver ones must be removed. So I'll go ahead and take those out real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install the filament spool holder. Now to be honest, this is going to probably be temporary because I'm going to likely print out something to install the filament spool on like to the side because getting around to the back of this thing can be a little bit of a chore and that's I think that's kind of one of the complaints people have is these the uh, spool holders on the rear but at least this thing allows you to use regular one kilogram spools on like other models out there so we'll make sure that when you install this you have this notch facing upward because what that does is it helps prevent the spool from rubbing against the rear of the printer. And you don't want to have hardly any friction. You don't want to have hardly any friction on the rear of this thing on that spool because it's trying to feed in filament. So that being said, I'm going to do that off camera. Also, I'm going to go ahead and plug in our power. And since I have Ethernet right here, I'm going to plug in the Ethernet cable. This also has Wi-Fi, if that's what works better for you. So. We'll continue here in just a moment. Okay, so now we're ready to power this thing up. And I do want to note something. This 3D printer has a soft on functionality, kind of like a computer. Um, the power switch on the back is switched on. And one thing I should note is it's not on according to this, but if you listen carefully, there is a fan running in the back of this thing. I think it's on like the microprocessor or something. So, that's a little concerning as far as longevity is concerned. I mean, that fan running all the time, as long as there's power plugged in and the switch on the back is switched on, that's, yeah, a little little concerning, but I'm not going to, like, take major points off for 
you know, something like that. But, I mean, obviously, because the computers in my house, they stay on all the time anyway, so. <laughs> that being said, let's go ahead and switch this thing on and run through the setup procedures. Okay, let's go ahead and start this thing up and let's run through the setup procedure. And we have life. Okay, so I've shut down the computer plex that way you can hear exactly how this machine sounds. So we're going to run through our sound process. Now, the video I saw on YouTube, the guy had a stylus. I don't know if that came with the device or if that's just one he had. But anyways, it's going to run through our setup here. So we'll select our language, which is English, for me anyways. Click Next. Printing preparation. Please confirm all packing materials are taken out. The printer needs to be calibrated for the current environment. Please ensure the heated bed is unlocked before starting calibration, in which that means you remove the screws from the bed. Alright, so we're going to click Next.
Okay, so now we need to load our filament. So we'll insert this spool into the holder on the rear of this machine. And you can see why I'm going to be changing that for something else, probably in the near future. So we got to pass it through this tube. Alright, it's going to tap load. So it's going to preheat the hot end. So as it's preheating, well it's, it's actually preheated now, it's loading the filament in, I can feel it feeding. So right now there's some red coming out, and that's what they had used to, I guess, test this in the factory. Okay, so it is completed, and it did send quite a bit of the stuff through here. So, uh, you can see that or not, but, uh. And that's kind of poor lighting right here in this part of the room, but you can see the red that was in there, and now we had the burnt titanium. All right, so what it's going to do now is it's going to print, I think it's going to print a small cube. How appropriate for a cube for your channel. Cube test. Yeah, I have not applied any of that glue, so I'm curious to see if it will stick. And we are printing. So it's just putting a small little cube there. And this thing is wicked fast. So you can see we are 22% done already.
and we are done. Took six minutes to make that. I'd say it stuck to the bed really nice too. That was without the glue. So this is what the burnt titanium looks like. So interesting filament. Now of course there's all sorts of different types of filaments out there you can choose from on the internet. But this has a glittery green look to it. Which I think is very cool. So anyways, that is unboxing, setting up and doing a quick little test print with the Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro 3D printer. Very impressed with this machine. Now one thing I should note is it's a high speed machine so it accelerates and decelerates really rapidly and one thing I'm noticing is my um, shelf here is actually shaking a little bit when this thing jerks around which I may have to do something to sort of alleviate that a little bit but that's part of what that I believe that's part of what that vibration test was for is for this machine to learn what it's sitting on and be able to work with any uh, sort of you know movement so let's get all the rest of the old stuff out of here so what this does is it actually which by the way this comes right out I forgot to mention that so the build plate comes right out and that makes it easy to remove large objects because well it's flexible that Dremel Digilab 3D45 that was featured in a recent video has a glass plate which yeah it's not flexible so it's a bit more work to get stuff off the build plate but I mean it's this is very nice definitely very nice so I should note the Dremel Digilab 3045 which I was pretty critical of it for simply the matter it's a six year old machine that's being sold for two thousand dollars which is an absolute ripoff meanwhile this 3d printer um, it's built to a similar if not much better quality of construction I mean the thing looks pretty rugged just by looking at it um, it's normally $599 or $600 so for less than half of the cost of the Dremel you're getting a much 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 nicer machine here so I should note this I believe this Flash Forge's newest offering it is the newest adventure offering it came out earlier this year I do believe but yeah, um, very impressive. So, give you a quick look at the menu here before I end this video. So, you have your home menu here, which shows, of course, the printer. It shows temperatures of your build plate as well as the extruder. Go down here to build, or excuse me. You, we, we actually have a 3D menu right here on board. So. Flash Forge was nice enough to include the 3D Vinci, which we're going to test at a later time. So we have six different models here, which these, I believe, are the same ones that were on that flash drive. When there's a 3D Vinci, which I didn't see on the flash drive, but we had the cookie cutter, uh, gearing, starfish mold. These are all for PLA, by the way. So that, to keep in mind, is when these were sliced, they were sliced with the parameters for PLA. So here's where you go to load your filament, which is the third one here. Here you can manually jog the um, bed as well as the extruder. So also we have network set up. And we have to turn the Ethernet on, apparently. So I've connected to the uh, network here and you can see, of course, we have Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and apparently this thing offers a hotspot function. And it is asking for a firmware update, so I'm going to hit no on that for now. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So we have Flash Cloud set up and Polar 3D set up here. 
here is where you would redo the leveling and vibration test. I would suggest you do this um, if you move your 3D printer to a different location. And also, I think it'd be a good idea to do this after a firmware update applies. Based on what I read online in the Amazon review, someone had um, downloaded a firmware update on their, well actually the printer automatically found the firmware update and downloaded it and after it installed it it went to, when they went to do a print everything was way off and it was causing the uh, hot end to actually embed into the bed which is not good so here you have the option to turn on and turn off the um, internal circulation filtration as well as the external circulation filtration so here's the internal and the external that's what we heard earlier so it's telling you when printing materials like ABS or ASA that require specific chamber temperature the device activates internal circulation filtration when printing PLA or PETG the device activates external circulation filtration the filtration system automatically turns on after a certain period once printing is completed or turns off excuse me this thing has a built-in camera which is right there so this thing has a number of different features with the camera so you can turn the camera on and what this will do is uh, it'll allow the camera to work when you're printing and this thing has the feature where you can actually save pictures and videos which there's none right now because right now it's turned off but this thing can actually save pictures and videos I think it does a time lapse of a 3D print which is really interesting I'll have to definitely look into that but for now I'm going to turn these back off just for now so the bottom menu here is machine info here you can turn the sound off or on film it detect off or on which probably should be on I'll deal with that later auto shut down this shuts the unit down after a specific amount of idle time and you have an after sale support and maintenance guide there you can also factory reset the device there now this firmware update that's what we was prompted for earlier so we're going to go ahead and update the firmware this will probably reboot the machine and after this installs I'm going to run through the leveling and vibration again just to be safe so it says to restart the printer so we'll turn it off we'll select yes now we may have to actually hard reset it I don't know let's try just powering it back up like this okay it's updating the firmware right now and like updating the BIOS on your computer you don't want the power to go out <laughs> when this is occurring okay so it finished installing the firmware update now let's go ahead and go back into that settings menu and I'm going to let's see here have it do the leveling and vibration tests again just to make sure everything is where it needs to be before we do another print so that being said I'm going to wrap it up for this video so that is an unbox and setup and first test print of the FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro 3D printer anyways have you enjoyed it thanks for watching Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cubecomp MTDX. Over there, you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.